This week on the Racing Insiders, rules from the United Sports Car Racing Organization, they're finally coming out. A lot of controversy. We'll deal with it here. We've got interviews from the ALMS round at Mosport, including winners from the overall and GT. We've got winners from the Global Rallycross round in Bristol and Formula Drift in Seattle. And are you kidding me? Stuff that's going on in our minds, you'll love it. This week on The Racing Insiders. Welcome to The Racing Insiders. I'm Bill Wood in Los Angeles. Peter Keen is on assignment. Jim Daniels is in Memphis, Tennessee. Let's get right to the United Sports Car rules that are coming out. We've learned a lot about what the plans are for next year, 2014. Jim, give us a little update on the rules. Give us some analysis on what's happening with sports car racing next year. Well, hey, fans of our show are going to know that we said that the only thing constant about these rules is that they're going to change. So we had uh, folks from Mazda on with John Doonan. We had Tom Long, the driver of that number 70 Speed Source uh, Sky Active diesel car. And the first big news was GX Class was not going anywhere. Now GX Class is being consolidated into the GT Class. The other big nuance that's a pretty stir, a big stir in the paddock at Mossport is that it's clear they want the ALMS GT cars, which are going to be a different class than the Daytona GT cars of the uh, current Grand Am. They want those cars to be faster because the language that we're seeing for these GT cars is we're going to have series controlled wings. We're going to have series controlled sonic inlet restrictors. And I know from my racing, it's no fun when someone hands you a different restrictor for every session. You don't have time to go to the dyno, get your power right. So it's pretty clear that we're going to have the fastest GT class be the ALMS cars. My gut feeling from talking to anyone, when we get to 2014, we're going to have less teams in our world of sports car racing. Bill? Uh, Jim, good analysis. The one thing that's missing that people are having questions about is there's no P1 cars. We knew that. We knew there would be no P1. But now that it's coming into a real reality, the pe questions are being raised. People are going to miss that, especially the drivers who drive the P1 cars now, like Lucas Lohr. We talked to him. They won the race at ALMS at uh, Canadian Tire Motorsports Park at Mostport. We talked to him this weekend. Well, I think that the exclusion of a P1, first of all, is a bad thing uh, because a lot of fans come to the races to see the LMP1 cars. They are fast, fascinating, you know, very, very high on the technical side of view. But also from the other point of view, um, it closes the door for any manufacturers which are building P1 cars to come to the US and race. So. My personal opinion, it's, it's a bad thing for, for sports car racing in America. I've had some background conversations with some P1 drivers and team owners over the past couple of weeks, and they're not happy about this P1 going away. The reason why they're in P1 is because they like that technology. They like the speed. They like to be out in front at the sharp end of the field. There are rumors that there's going to be a P1 series. I don't think that's going to hold true. The people that I've talked to have said that they can't sustain a series globally. There's not enough cars. Toyota dropped a car. Straka is not racing anymore. Rebellion is uh, limited in its schedule. They don't have the support. Uh, P Porsche is coming online, but there's maybe only 15 cars globally, and you can't have a series, uh, even a national series, with 10 or 15 cars. It's probably not going to happen. It's probably wishful thinking on the part of fans. But it's still out there. The rumor won't go away. If you hear it, tell them the people on the Racing Insiders told you that it's probably not going to happen. What is going to happen, though, is ALMS at Mostport. We've got the GT winner who's going to be with us. He drove a fantastic race. He loves driving the Corvettes and waving the American flag. We'll be right back to Racing Insiders right after this. Let us know what you think about what the Racing Insiders have to say. Tell us on Facebook and Twitter. Want to keep up with all the racing action at the track? Well, download the new Go Racing TV iPhone and Android app. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.
back. I'm Bill Wood in Los Angeles. Peter Keene is on assignment, and Jim Daniels is in Memphis. We had a great race, the LMS round at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park in Mosport. Jim, give us a quick background on what happened. Hey, I was glued to the TV today for a lot of reasons. My good buddy Kuno Whitmer was there with the Viper team, and boy, did his teammates, uh, Fraunbacher, put it uh, put a show on with, uh, with the Corvette and Tommy Milner. Uh, basically, it was the race to watch, especially in the last 15 minutes. Well, a lot of PC cars and even P2 cars not being too cordial in how they was racing those leaders, but we had a, a classic rubber band effect, you know, down the back straightaway of Moss Sport. If anybody's raced there like I have, you're just a sitting duck if you're the front car. This uh, driver, Tommy Milner, is quite the wheel man. Lamar winner, champion last year. Uh, I think he's only 25 years old. Uh, he did everything you can do with that car not to get a drive-by penalty. We got to catch up with uh, Tommy Milner and talk about his championship uh, hopes and some uh, and some other points with him. Here's that interview. I mean, right now we're uh, first in uh, manufacturer's championship um, in GT. Uh, our four cars had a couple rough races the last couple races, but the, our teammates in the three car, Antonio and Jan, have had, have had uh, a win and, and some podium, so they've, they've kind of carried the flag for, for Corvette the last couple races. But uh, you know, our, car's, our car's been quick sort of everywhere, and especially the, the, the races that we go to now, uh, the, the second half of the season definitely suit our Corvette uh, pretty well. So um, definitely looking forward to the rest of the season. Um, so far here at most sports, the car's been quick, and uh, just got to keep that mo that momentum going and, and uh, you know, just got to keep the car on the podium. And if, if we can do that, then we'll be in good shape the rest of the year. This win was important for the Corvette Racing Team and Tommy Milner. They do have a chance now to get a championship. They lead the points in several categories, but it is important to get this win. And it's important also to hold off the Viper Team. The Vipers were closing at very strong at the end of the, of the race, Jim, and they could have won maybe with another race in a clear track. That's what's going on in the ALMS at Mosport this past weekend. We've got winners from the Global Rallycross Round at Bristol and Formula Drift in Seattle. That's coming up on the Racing Insiders right after this. This segment of the Racing Insiders was brought to you by GoRacingTV.com. For racers, by racers. Welcome back to the Racing Insiders. We had a chance to talk to Tomas Heikinen, the hottest name in Global Rallycross, winner of the last three rounds, including this past weekend in Bristol. Talked to him before he went back to Finland. The hottest name in Global Rallycross right now is Topi Heikinen. He's won the last three rounds, including last weekend in Bristol, Tennessee. Bristol is a place where stock cars go, but Global Rallycross took it over last weekend, got a fair crowd, and uh, we've got Topi on the line right now. Tomas Heikinen, congratulations on a, a season that's become yours. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks so much. And I'm so happy right now and really enjoy what I'm I've done, but you started in the second row, and it seems like the further back you start, the faster you're going to be when you get to the first turn. The first turn is the most important in rallycross. How did you get from the second row to the lead in just two turns? Yeah, I, I lived struggling on the heat. I have I drove like uh, with Thunder and with, with the, and Ken Flock and with the Brian on the heat, and it was so so tough for us driving together. And you know it's. It's a rallycross and everything can happen. But on the on the final, we start on the second row. I get a good start on the grid, and on the first corner, I choose the inside lane, and I I show like a block, give me a little space there, and I just take it, and it was the key for for yesterday. Now the next round in Global Rallycross is here in Los Angeles at X Games. That's where you had a very bad accident downtown last year. They changed the style of the jumps because of that accident. Are you going to feel any different about coming to this event? No, I don't think so. It's a new race for me again. But in case I was there like last year, and I made a huge crash there. But in case my ankle is still a little bit struggling. But I don't, I don't care anymore, and I really enjoy what I'm doing, and it's a nice to work with the Ford. The, the season is far from over. You still have, what, two, three events left. Can you get the championship? <laughs> yeah, that's you, but in case. We have to still take the race by race, and we have to concentrate really much, and we have to work harder. Even we, because, you know, it's motorsport, and everything can happen. You're going to 
break your engine or something like this. But in case I'm happy right now and really enjoy. Tomas Heikinen, winner of the last three rounds in Global Rallycross, has a big lead in points. Season's not over yet. He's ready to come back to Los Angeles to keep fighting for the title. Tomas, congratulations on a great season, and thanks a lot for uh, being here on the Racing Insider. Thanks a lot, and thanks a lot. Here's a uh, U.S. is an awesome place. I really enjoy to be here. Thank you. Anybody that's caught this on ESPN knows it's a slugfest. It's like UFC fighting, if, uh, if I could call it that. They really need to put a dome around the entire track. And when these eight or 12 cars converge on turn one and crash each other and somebody from the second row, arguably a great driver, goes into the lead and it's all over. We really need those wreck drivers to get out, tape up their hands, and have another little fight inside <laughs> this big dome ring. It's a lot of action. To me, Kim Block's the best guy in the field. I've watched all these races. He's knocking on the door of a win. It's all that turn one if you get held out lose four or five seconds you just can't make it back up even though he was a second a lap quicker than the leader the problem is for me they need to be 30 minute races at least give us 20 minutes a 10 lap shootout and you're turning 28 second laps you know it's just they just get going and i want more bill I don't know, Jim. I disagree. I think the format, the only thing that's missing in American Rallycross is more cars. If they had more quality cars, then they could have more heats and you'd have new races and fresh races every five, ten minutes. That's the action, and that's what would make this really a fabulous show. Right now, there's just not enough cars, uh, quality cars, and uh, that. but that's going to come around as the season grows and uh, ESPN and television and so forth. That's going to change. We also have uh, more in uh, Formula Drift. Talk to the winner, Chris Forsberg. The first non-racer to win a Formula Drift Championship was Chris Forsberg. That was in 2009. This weekend in Seattle, he got his seventh win overall, his first of 2013, to take the points lead. A big win for Chris Forsberg. He's with us now. Chris, congratulations. Thank you so much, Bill. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great to be on top. We've uh, you know, gotten a lot of twos and threes over the years, but, um, you know, yeah, it's, uh, it's good to be back on the top of the podium. Let me ask you a question that I know you can't answer. I know the answer is going to be to this, but you would be the third person to win a second championship. You think you could close the deal with two events left? I mean, we, we are surely going to try. I mean, Dallas is, uh, is, is a real kicker. It's, you know, no one's been there. No one's got any notes. No one has an advantage. So it's going to really shake things up for the, uh, for the points lead. A very close competition in Formula Drift this year. It, this is Odie Baxis used to be a, a given for a win, and now he's getting on the podium almost. Very close competition this year. Yeah, there's a lot of new faces getting up on the podiums. It's great. It's always good to see new competition, and uh, you know, it's 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 awesome. Um, you know, to see the sport advancing, and it's um, you know, it just shows that we have to keep doing what we have to do to to push for wins and podiums and championships. You know, you can't just sit aside and uh, you know let a bunch of newcomers come and, and you know start winning these events. It's uh, it, it shakes it up and it keeps the points. You know, like uh, really you know tough to stay ahead. But you know, we're glad to be out on top. There were a lot of delays in the competition this weekend, especially the w one more time in the consolation round. Did that hurt your rhythm at all? Uh, you know, it's um, like, yeah, there's, there's, you know, things that happen. There was a lot of wrecks. There was a lot of hits this weekend and, uh, you know, zero points given out. It, it, it definitely, you know, messes with, uh, you know, the, the flow of, of the event and the flow of each driver preparing for their battle. And, um, you know, but... As professionals, we have to handle anything that's given to us or thrown at us, even if it's, uh, you know, a battle in front of us taking too long or if it's us getting thrown into the wall behind someone else. You know, it's, uh, it's all part of the game, and, and you got to be able to handle those situations to come out on top. Go celebrate, partner. Good job. All right. Thank you so much, Bill. There's two rounds left in the Formula Drift season. They go to Texas, be on the banks there, and at Irwindale, be on the banks there at a short track in uh, Southern California. Forsberg has won a championship in 2009. He knows how to win championships. It's going to be pretty difficult to knock him off that top spot. When we come back, are you kidding me? We got Jim and I will give you a little bit of inside information in the world of sports cars right after this. This segment was brought to you by 
the Sports Car Club of America. Are you kidding me? We've been trying to do this without Peter Keene this week. Jim and I have been trying to hold it down, but Peter is at the uh, CRB, the Competition Race Board, the SCCA, big meetings in Kansas, and he, before he left, he left us with this, are you kidding me? Here's Peter. Hey Bill, my are you kidding me is the United Sports Car Racing's new rules for Daytona Prototype and the P2 class. I, I can't believe this, I just read it. First of all, the, the are you kidding me is, we still don't know what we're supposed to build. We have no idea in Daytona Prototype what the engine or the chassis configuration is gonna be. Secondly, there's three to four times more Daytona prototypes are, than there are P2 cars. But the P2 cars get to stay the way they say, the same and then let all these guys with the Daytona prototypes spend a bunch of money to catch up to the P2 cars with paddle shift and, and I'm sure aerodynamics and I guess more horsepower and you know learning uh, single inlet restrictors. It's just ridiculous to me how, how they took you know, a successful series and they're going to make them all change to go to a series that had three or four cars at the most ever. That's my are you kidding me? Thanks, Peter. Jim, what's on your mind? Hey, are you kidding me? I'm all for the First Amendment, but we got some race fans out there on these forums. Every time ALMS or Grand Am's make an announcement about DTM and DTM meetings or the consolidation of the class, uh, you got guys on there, we're going to boycott the races. We're never going to watch a race with a DTM and a P2. Look, guys, this is not helping your favorite drivers. Most of these guys are scrambling to find rides. Teams are going away. You know, we really need to uh, express our differences, but to say you're going to boycott your favorite favorite drivers, it's not the driver's fault. The driver has nothing to do with this. Everybody, including the sanctioning bodies, are trying to scramble to find an audience that's viable financially. If it's not viable financially, there'd be no races and it'd be nothing for us to drool over and watch on TV. So I would say you fans, make a few more positive comments out there about your favorite drivers and hope that they have a ride when all this consolidation is over. Bill? Thanks, Jim. My, are you kidding me? This week is Ford and fans that have been waiting all season for Ford to get involved in the Rolex DP. Corvette kind of took it over last year. Ford has been promising to step up to the plate and we get some news from Michael Shank Racing in Columbus, Ohio, that that's happening. He's got a body that he's got some fitment that's going on there at his shop that it looks great. We'll be happy to see it. And the engine, the Echo Boost engine, the V6 Turbo, that they're w we're waiting to see that. And uh, we want that to come online, all the Ford fans, so that Ford has an answer. Is the new body going to look like a Mustang or a Fiesta? I threw that at somebody this past <laughs> week, and they just laughed and said, no, Mustang doesn't compete against Corvette, but they will have some styling cues on the nose and the tail. That's my Are You Kidding Me? We'll be right back with some closing comments for the Racing Insiders right after this. Before we get out of here, Jim, what do you have going on for the weekend? Hey, World Touring Car Championship in Brazil, one of my favorite uh, race series to follow. Uh, and you cannot uh, be a race fan and not be happy that Grand Am, Continental Tire, Grand Am Rolex, NASCAR, all at the Brickyard this weekend, surely to create a lot of excitement. It's a big race, especially for the road racing guys. And uh, my eyes are going to be on that race. Bill? And Jim, since I'm a Rally fan, I'll throw out there that the Rally America is in Maine for the New England Forest Rally. And also give a little insight that we had Antoine Lestage on the show uh, several weeks ago when he crashed his WRC car. He's coming back with a car that he's won with before, a Hyundai Tiburon all-wheel drive. It's been refreshed by Libra Racing, John Buffum, repackaged, new wrap. He's going to be driving that this weekend at the New England Forest Rally in Maine. That's our show for this week, the Racing Insiders. Peter Keene was on assignment in Kansas with the SCCA, and Jim Daniels is in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm Bill Wood in Los Angeles. We look forward to seeing you next week on the Racing Insiders. Until then, take care of each other, respect each other. Peace.